Happy 2024, I hope you had a great start into this new year. In Austria, we have a very special tradition. Every January the 1st, we are glued to our TVs and we watch the New Year's concert of the Vienna Philharmonics, even those who are not the usual classical music aficionados. And what many people don't know is that this concert has a very close link to fashion. Some very big names of the fashion industry have created the outfits for the state ballet for the concert. Among them, Vivian Westwood, Valentino and Christian Lacroix. Let's take a look. Before I dive into the fashion details, let me give you a brief overview of the history of the concert itself. It all goes back to the Strauss family, the famous composers. You may know the Blue Danube Waltz. And they had a close collaboration with the Vienna Philharmonics and they held many concerts together. The New Year's concert, as we know it today, has a darker side to it. There was still this focus on the Strauss family, but the first time that it was held on New Year's Day was in 1939, at the height of the war and at the height of the Nazi dictatorship, and it was also used for Nazi propaganda. After the war, the Vienna Philharmonics kept the tradition of a New Year's concert, and they worked permanently with conductors from the 1980s onwards. They started a kind of rotational system, and every year they invited a different famous conductor to hold this concert with them. Among them, Subin Mehta, Franz Welser Möst, Ricardo Muti or this year Christian Thielemann. Over time, more and more people started to watch the concert on TV in Austria and abroad. Today, the concert is broadcast to 90 different countries and needless to say, this is a major driver for Austrian tourism. The Musikverein Saal, the Golden Hall, is now a major tourist attraction and also the videos of the TV broadcast are very important. There's one in the intermission that is usually showing some beautiful sights in Austria and there are also two to three videos with the state ballet which also often take place in Austrian palaces for example. With this growing popularity the people involved in the New Year's concert saw the potential and also the importance of the costumes for the state ballet. They had been collaborating with traditional costume designers but in 1998 they did something different. They asked the famous fashion designer Christian Lacroix to create the costumes for the state ballet and this kicked off a series of collaborations with many big names of the fashion industry. Before I discuss these big names, let me also introduce you to some costume designers because I think they also deserve some recognition here. The first one is Christoph Kremer who has collaborated with the New Year's concert multiple times and I really appreciate his work approach because in interviews he said that uh, he looks into the historic details of the videos and he tries to bring them to life uh, with a modern twist. For example, he created evening gowns merged with the traditional costumes of ballet dancers and he wanted to achieve that uh, effect uh, as if the ballet dancers were floating. And this is a very important point that he made. We have to bear in mind here that it is very different if a garment is created for the runway or for a ballet dancer because needless to say there's more movement for the ballet dancer involved than walking on the runway. I really like the costumes of uh, Jordi Roig for the New Year's concert in 2018. At first sight on the pictures they might look a bit boring, we have these floral patterns, but actually in the whole setting of the Baroque palaces they worked really well. And this is another point that the big fashion designers have to take into account as well. The costumes don't need to only stand out themselves, but they also have to work in this video setting and they might create a very different effect on the photographs and then in the videos. Now let's come to the core of this video, the famous fashion designers who came to Vienna to collaborate with the New Year's concert. As I mentioned before, the first one was Christian Lacroix in 1998 and he ended up collaborating with the concert three times in 1998, 2000 and 2021. I think it was no coincidence that uh, Christian Lacroix was chosen for this collaboration because on the one hand he was a very famous fashion designer of the time. At the same time he had already created some ballet costumes for the Opera in Paris. So he had some experience in working with ballet dancers and the requirements uh, for creating costumes for them. Unfortunately, I could not find a lot of footage for his creations for the New Year's concert of 1998. I found one video which I linked in the description below. Similarly, also the footage for the year 2000 is quite limited, but I also found another video which I have also linked, uh, but we can get the idea. These designs were relatively simple, but they were very elegant. They were held in black and white, and the only difference uh, of the dresses of each dancer was that the color of the lining and some other parts was a bit different. So when the dancers moved or when they twirled and we got the bird's eye view, it created this beautiful, colorful effect. 
And this uh, design also stood for a bit more. It stood for the overall mood of the year 2000. On the one hand, we have the dancers in this traditional Baroque palace, which stands for the past. At the same time, they wear these futuristic outfits ringing in the new millennium. And these bright colors were also an overall fashion trend of the early 2000s. I have to say I was not a big fan of his designs for 2021 for the reason that they felt a bit too forced. Christian Lacroix is known for his use of colors and also his puffy skirts. And uh, in these costumes, it just felt a bit too much. The colors sometimes did not really work that well, in my opinion, and also this puffy part of uh, the skirt was also a bit too much. I did like some of the costumes which referenced the 1920s flapper women because again this looked effortless, it looked very elegant and it was something new. 2010 was a major fashion moment in Vienna because none other than Valentino created the costumes for the state ballet. He had already been retired by then, but he kind of came back from his retirement for this project and he created a range of dresses uh, from grey to nude to blush pink. Uh, and there was also one dress that was in his signature Valentino red. If you look at these pictures today, they may look a bit much. We might even say they look a bit tacky. But when you watch the video, which I've also linked in the description, you see how well they really worked. For the Morgenblätter Waltz uh, of Strauss, they chose uh, the Art History Museum as a backdrop and in this uh, marble architecture and also in the painting galleries, these grey uh, nude and blush pink outfits worked really really well. They look very effortless and elegant and I think uh, this is one of the best videos that they have actually ever produced. Similarly, this signature Valentino red was also a major moment. It looked really beautiful on TV and this is the point that I made before that uh, the outfits look uh, very different in the photographs and then in the videos and this is something that has to be considered when they are created. And Valentino himself said that he always applies this work approach that garments only come to life once there's movement in them and this is even more true for ballet dancers. He also said that he was very moved seeing the dancers in his costumes in these beautiful sets things and I think it was a very successful collaboration because on the one hand we can see it is Valentino, the signature red, the other colors, the tool, the flowers, but on the other hand it did not feel forced, it worked really well in the setting and I think it is actually one of the most beautiful videos and I really think you should watch this one. Now let's come to 2014, one of my personal favorites. Vivian Westwood and her husband and creative director Andreas Kronthaler created the costumes for the State Ballet. Uh, Andreas Kronthaler is Austrian, by the way, and they applied the approach that they looked similar to Christoph Kramer, what I said before, into the historic details of the videos and the settings. And then they mixed those with their brand DNA and they came up with uh, two groups of costumes. The first group was more, let's say, traditional. It was evening gowns and also Vivian Westwood was always very famous for her bridal couture and her evening gowns. So this was reflected here. And the other group was uh, mixed with uh, Scottish tartan, another signature of the brand. And the dancers looked like harlequins dancing in these Baroque palaces. I personally found it really fun, but I do think that a lot of people were shocked by it. One thing we need to bear in mind here is that the New Year's concert is not the most progressive event of the year and people expect the Austrian stereotype, let's put it like this. The beautiful gowns in a traditional setting and this is something very different. Suddenly Westwood comes in with her punk, she's very progressive, she does something completely unexpected and I think a lot of people were shocked, probably also a lot of people hated it but I personally loved it because it was something different and it showed that something traditional like the New Year's concert can also be very progressive and modern. In 2014, the New Year's concert collaborated for the first time with Austrian-based fashion labels. Uh, it was two of them, Elfenkleid and Peter Petrov. Elfenkleid at the time was very famous for their bridal gowns. They were some of the first ones uh, to move away from the opulent bridal gowns and make them more flowy, more easygoing. And this is also what they did for the New Year's concert with uh, bright colors in shades of like pink, red and purple. Peter Petrov is originally from Bulgaria. He came to Vienna to study and he founded his fashion label here in 2009. 
He is known for his clear cuts, his shapes, and his client list uh, is made up of many celebrities. Uh, it ranges from Hailey Bieber to Kerry Washington, Emily Blunt and Gwyneth Paltrow. When I did the research for this video, I was a bit surprised because there's much more footage uh, about the Elfenkleid creations than for Peter Petrov. And I think a reason might be that maybe these creations fit better into this narrative of the Austrian stereotype because Peter Petrov's creations are a bit more edgy. They are a bit more on the side of Vivian Westwood. They also use bright colors. So maybe this is one of the reasons why the Elfenkleid one was more promoted, uh, but maybe there was a different reason. But if you find more footage about this, I would appreciate it if you could post it in the comments below or if you could just DM me. Another Austrian designer is Arthur Abesser. He was born in Vienna and he studied at Central St. Martins and he has his own label, but he is also a fashion consultant. In 2015, he won the LVMH prize and he is uh, very well known for his geometry, his clear lines. And some people actually say that he is inspired by the Jugendstil here in Vienna. This is the Art Deco in Austria. And he created outfits for two New Year's concerts in 2019 and in 2022. For the concert in 2019, Abesser created two groups of outfits. One was a bit more romantic, maybe a bit more traditional. Uh, it was dresses with tulle, for example, in white, uh, pale blue or blush pink. And on the picture where he is standing in the middle of the dancers, it looks a bit random because we have these dresses and then there is this kind of random uh, black and white polka dot dress and then also one with a geometric pattern that looks like a harlequin pattern. So I was not a big fan of this. I actually enjoyed the second group of outfits of this concert because it was something that we hadn't seen before. Abessa created colorful and very short costumes for the female dancers. This was very interesting and also the costumes for the men were really interesting because he opted for a bright blue and somehow these outfits looked like the suits of Italian businessmen, maybe in Milan. Maybe I overinterpret this here, but it could be a reference to Milan where Abessa lives. So I really like this in this traditional setting of the video. I think it worked really well. For 2022, again, when we look at the group picture, the outfits look a bit random, but uh, when we look into the videos, it worked actually really well. And one of my favorite outfits was the green uh, dress for dancer Rebecca Horner. It looks again very simple in the picture, but when she was moving and dancing, it was just stunning in this architectural setting. So I think this was one of his best creations for the New Year's concert. Let's end this video with this year's New Year's concert. I was really excited when I heard that the concert would collaborate with Susanne Bisowski, an Austrian fashion designer who I really like. The videos are set in Bad Ischl. It's a very small town in Austria and it is one of the European cultural capitals this year. You may not have heard about it, but it's very close to Hallstatt, which I'm sure you know. And Bad Ischl was also the summer residence of the Emperor and the Empress and Empress Sisi was the major inspiration for the two videos of this uh, New Year's concert. Susanne Bisowski said in interviews that she was very honored to supply the outfits for the State Ballet for the New Year's concert because like so many of us, she grew up watching the New Year's concert and always dreamt of one day creating the garments. She also had previous experience on stage because she created outfits for the Vienna State Opera but she mentioned that this is a different challenge. If you create something for an opera singer, it is more static than for ballet dancers. And this is something that you have to keep in mind that the outfits for the dancers have to keep their shape and grace when the dancers are moving. Bisowski also mentioned the requirements for international TV productions. As I mentioned before, the concert is broadcast to 90 different countries. So there are also certain do's and don'ts for the designers. For example, certain body parts have to be covered because the last thing that the New Year's concert wants is an outcry over the costumes. She also said that it is kind of a cliche, but the camera loves glitter and glimmer and you can clearly see this. She also collaborated with the Austrian company Swarovski for this. I do have to say sometimes it was a bit too much glimmer and glitter for me, especially the blue outfit in the second video and also the outfits for the men, but this is just uh, my personal opinion. As I mentioned before, the videos, I had a close link to Empress Sissi. The first video, for example, was a more mature Sissi in the later stages of her life in this matronly gown that was uh, Susanne Bisowski immediately at first sight because you could tell from the lace and also from all the details, but it was still Empress Sissi. 
And then this Sissy dreams of the times when she was younger, when she was dancing in the garden. And we see the dancer in this beautiful signature Bisovsky creation with the flowers and the colors. So I thought this was quite a successful first video. I actually liked the outfits for the second video even more, especially the ones uh, in white and cream. As I said before, I was not a big fan of this uh, blue dress for the main dancer. It was a bit too much glitter for me. And similarly, I also did not like the men's outfits too much. But Susanne Bisovsky said she opted exactly for those outfits to bring the male dancers a bit into the background and let the female dancers stand out more. She also explained that in addition to the Sissy storyline, uh, she wanted to incorporate details from uh, fairy tales from the Czech Republic. And I think this is quite obvious when you look uh, at the head accessories. This was my video about famous fashion designers collaborating with the New Year's concert in Vienna. What about you? Did you know about this concert or did you know about this close link of the concert and fashion? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Also head over to thepinklookbook.com for more fashion related articles. And don't forget to check out my fashion label Pelagona. And now I wish you a happy new year, or as we say in Austria, Prosit Neujahr, and see you soon.